Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless as anyone can plainly see we are living in the last moments before the return of jesus christ america is in a spiritual battle between good and evil as we read in ephesians 6 12 where we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places for years the left has been tearing down statues of our founding fathers. They hate the white men who created the greatest document and country on earth. Very few of those rioters were charged. Because when a liberal beheads a statue of Thomas Jefferson, that's good old fashioned free speech. Statue toppling wasn't just tolerated, it was encouraged by Washington's most powerful people like Nancy. Beheading Thomas Jefferson was free speech, but a man who toppled a statue of Satan is being charged with a hate crime. So the devil was erected at the Iowa State Capitol by a satanic temple right next to the nativity scene in an intentionally provocative and disrespectful act. So before Christmas, a guy beheaded the Satan statue. The man, former U.S. Navy Reserve pilot Michael Cassidy, told Primetime it was good old Christian civil disobedience. I was surprised that it that the legislature allowed it up and that they didn't do anything to take it. And it, it offended me. It touched a nerve. It was, uh, you know, righteous indignation. I call it, you know, Christian uh, civil disobedience. Um, and yes, yeah, so I, I took the, the statue that was there and it, or the, the idol, whatever you want to call it, uh, and then it's no longer there. Democrat prosecutors now charging Cassidy with a hate crime for removing Satan's statue. It's a hate crime to take down Satan. It's a hate crime to move Satan away from baby Jesus. And Cassidy's facing jail time. And before you play devil's advocate and say, come on, Waters, toppling a Satan statue is an attack on religious freedom. Know this. The Satanic Temple admits Satan isn't even their God. All right, so you're probably going to go to hell, right? I, I don't believe in hell. <laughs> We're a non-theistic religious group. Okay, so how can it be a hate crime to remove a statue put up by a made-up religious group? You might have seen clips of this on social media yesterday. Reno Satanic, which considers itself a non-theistic group, opened the Washoe County Commission meeting praising social progress and freedom of thought. We will now move into the invocation. Today we have uh, Mr. Jason Miller. Come on in. May we seize this glorious day and its enchanting nights to celebrate the wonders of the natural world as we are all part of its boundless mysteries. In the spirit of the unconquerable sun, the bringer of light and knowledge, we say, Shemham Farash, hail Satan. The uh, invocation this morning gave a new meaning to the term public serpents. Whether the secularists and progressives know it or not, they are of their father the devil. John 8, 44. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar, and the father of it. An after-school program is raising red flags for some parents across the country. It's called the Satanic Temple, which is about to launch multiple student clubs this year. Now, while not new, as Brody Carter reports, some are questioning the temple strategy of targeting schools that have Christian after-school programs called Good News Clubs. Satan has no rule in this district. In Memphis, Tennessee, outrage after the Satanic Temple announced plans for an after-school club for grades K through 5 at a local school. Now, we're not sacrificing babies or killing baby goats. I remind the media that a good part of our population is vegetarian or vegan, and they literally wouldn't hurt a fly. Satan Club leader June Everett says kids will learn about nature and science, using cartoons like this to fashion Satan as a force for good. Chinchna, 
The Satan Club strategy, counter-programming at schools where a good news club already exists. We only go to the school districts where there is a good news club or other religious club operating. The Satanic Temple did not respond to CBN's interview request. However, last year, Everett told CBN News that she got involved after a good news club sponsor scared her first grade child. He went on to tell me how he was going to burn in hell, be taken away from everyone that he knew and loved, his mom, his dad, Molly, our dog at the time. If we didn't start going to church and accept Jesus Christ into our hearts. The Satanic Temple has 10 after school clubs in six states. And now a Kansas school district has approved the Satanic Temple's first high school Satan club. During the end times, the Bible says that wickedness and evil will run rampant all over the world. Jesus warned that by resisting these things, that Christians would be hated by all nations. Jesus said the world hated him first so that we should expect that the world will hate us as well. Satan isn't masking his intentions anymore, is he? Battle lines are being drawn, and people are choosing sides. If you know someone who doesn't know the Lord, tell them. Time is definitely running out for them to come to Jesus. Revelation 12.12 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. A good indicator we are living in the last moments of human history is that Satan has infiltrated our society in every way possible. We must understand Satan hates us because we are created in the image of Almighty God. Satan wants not only to be like God, but wants to exalt himself above God as we read in 2 Thessalonians 2.4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Satan has worked his way onto the TV screen, where he is portrayed as a fun and caring guy on the path of redemption, where women love him and men want to be him. To be a Christian today is to rebel against these vices and to speak out against the holly weird experience that is beginning to invade almost every aspect of our lives and society. Satan is busy deceiving mankind, and mankind is falling for his deceptions. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Make no mistake about Satan. There is no redemption for him. His fate has been sealed, as we read in Revelation 20:10. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan wants to take as many people to hell with him as possible. 1 Peter 5.8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Once upon a time, there was a glowing city protected by golden gates known as heaven. It was ruled by beings of pure light, angels that worshiped good and shielded all from evil. Lucifer was one of these angels. He was a dreamer with fantastical ideas for all of creation, but he was seen as a troublemaker by the elders of heaven, for they felt his way of thinking was dangerous to the order of their world. So he watched as the angels began to expand the universe in their ways. From the dust of earth, they created Adam and Lilith, equals as the first of mankind. But despite this, Adam demanded control and Lilith refused to submit to his will. She fled the garden. Drawn in by her fierce independence, Lucifer found her and the two rebellious dreamers fell deeply in love together. They wished to share the magic of free will with humanity, offering the fruit of knowledge to Adam's new bride, Eve, who gladly accepted. This gift came with a curse, for with this single act of disobedience, evil finally found its way into Earth. With it, a new realm of darkness and sin, and the order heaven had worked to maintain was shattered. As punishment for their reckless act, heaven cast Lucifer and his love into the dark pit he had created, never allowing him to see the good that came from humanity, only the cruel and the wicked. Ashamed, Lucifer lost his will to dream, but Lilith thrived, empowering demonkind with her voice and her songs, and as the numbers of hell grew, so did its power. Threatened by this, 
Heaven made a truly heartless decision that every year they would send down an army, an extermination, to ensure hell and its sinners could never rise against them. But Lilith's hope remained, and her dream was passed down to their precious daughter, the Princess of Hell. Don't worry, Mom. I'll make you proud. What did Jesus say or teach about hell? Hell is a fiery furnace. Matthew 13, 41 through 42. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hell is a place of outer darkness, sorrow, and pain. Matthew 22:13. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hell is eternal. Matthew 25, 46. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Hell is a place of torment. Luke 16, 24 through 26. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus, evil things, but now he is comforted, and you are tormented. Hell is a place of separation. Luke 16.26 And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. The Bible speaks of the reality of hell in the same terms as the reality of heaven. Revelation 20, 14 and 15 Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 21, 1 and 2 Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. In fact, Jesus spent more time warning people about the dangers of hell than he did in comforting them with the hope of heaven. The concept of a real, conscious, forever and ever existence in hell is just as biblical as a real, conscious, forever and ever existence in heaven. Trying to separate them is simply not possible from a biblical standpoint. The good news is, no one has to go to hell. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. The U.S. responded to new threats as the Pentagon prepares to retaliate for the deadly drone strike in Jordan that killed three American soldiers. We are in one of the most remote parts of Jordan. The Syrian border is just behind me. Iraq is off to my left. These are the countries from which the Iranian-backed militants have launched attacks against Americans. 
This morning, the U.S. finalizing retaliatory strikes for Sunday's drone hit here in Jordan that killed three American soldiers and wounded 47 others, the majority of the wounded National Guard soldiers. The deadly strike, one of nearly 170 attacks aimed at Americans in the region by Iranian-backed militants, the latest in the Red Sea. The U.S. conducting self-defense strikes in Yemen on a Houthi drone ground control station and 10 one-way drones. Just hours earlier, the USS Kearney shooting down an anti-ship ballistic missile fired by the group, in addition to three Iranian drones in less than an hour. U.S. forces also striking down a Houthi surface-to-air missile Wednesday, which officials say presented an imminent threat to U.S. aircraft operating in the area. This after the USS Gravely intercepted a Houthi missile heading toward the ship, splashing into the sea within only one mile of the warship, the closest call yet. Now all eyes waiting for the response to the tragic attack in Jordan, with the White House for the first time blaming the Iran-backed militant group Islamic Resistance in Iraq, an umbrella group of numerous militias. The Pentagon preparing to unleash a multi-day, multi-target campaign, bigger than anything seen this far, in hopes deterrence will prevent more loss of life. President Biden is not expected to hit Iran directly, fearing the conflict in this region will escalate Escalate, but it has already spread far beyond the borders of Gaza. FBI Director Christopher Wray warning lawmakers that Chinese hackers are preparing to wreak havoc on American infrastructure. China's multi-pronged assault on our national and economic security make it the defining threat of our generation. Let's be clear, cyber threats to our critical infrastructure represent real-world threats to our physical safety. The FBI disrupted a Chinese state-backed effort to target water treatment plants, transportation systems, and the electrical grid across the United States. It was a dramatic hearing where the FBI director said that hacking and economic espionage from China, as you saw, is the defining threat of our generation. Chris Ray described a newly unveiled case involving hacking from China that he says portrays just how sinister that threat is. He said that China has secretly stepped up its electronic warfare, deploying what is being called the Volt Typhoon malware throughout the U.S. economic ecosystem. It targeted water treatment plants, our electrical grid, our oil and natural gas pipelines, and our transportation systems. Ray said the malware was designed to cripple our nation at a time of China's choosing. In other words, China was taking steps to, quote, destroy or degrade the civilian critical infrastructure that keeps us safe and prosperous. The FBI, working with other agencies and partners, discovered the malware and has been working to root it out of the American economic system. It's like something out of science fiction, Michael. That sure sounds like it, Pierre. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race, as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention, his return is near. Dawn on a hillside in eastern Myanmar in late January. The forest crackles with the sound of gunfire. Three years on, Myanmar's military has less control than the day it launched the coup. Right now, the, it is already, <laughs> military doesn't control, you know, most of the country, at least 75% of the country, especially the border areas. But their presence is still felt. In Kaya State, ethnic Kareni forces have surrounded government troops in their bases, but unchallenged air power and artillery has stopped them from being overrun. Rebel fighters and civilians are suffering a high number of casualties. In Shan State, where the offensive began in late October, alliances and coordination between the ethnic armies. Myanmar's army has lost control of vital trade routes and border crossings with China. On the western coast, the military is under attack in the strategically important port of Sitwe. Rakhine State has been under martial law since the violence against the Rohingya Muslim minority in 2016. But even those harsh controls have failed to hold back the resistance. Luke 21:25, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, 
with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Flaming tires and other debris burned in Port-au-Prince, Haiti's embattled capital, as residents protested against overwhelming gang violence. Many here say life has become unbearable. I'm on the street today because my area of Pernier is not good. I can't stay at home. There are a lot of explosions. At the moment, people are leaving their houses. I have found myself obliged to take to the streets to say no to Ariel. Ariel refers to Prime Minister Ariel Henry, who has held office without elections since the assassination of President Jovenel Moise in July 2021. Many Haitians consider Henri an illegitimate ruler. The entire republic must rise to make Ariel Henri respond. We can no longer stand the insecurity. Nothing is functional, not even the democratic institutions. We want elections free of gangs. The head of state is now even involved in gangs. The whole country is gangsterized. Gangs now control an estimated 80% of Port-au-Prince and vast swaths of the countryside. Gang killings doubled last year to 4,500 and kidnappings surged by 80%. Gang members also engage in widespread rape and sexual assault of women and girls. According to the UN agency UNICEF, more than 300,000 Haitians have fled their homes because of violence and insecurity. I ran. I have children with me. I ran with them. I have nothing for them. They kill people. They chase us. That's why I left the area. For now, Haitians say they can't see a way out. Jesus speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Now to the frightening scene in Tampa, a road rage incident, a four-year-old girl shot and wounded, and the driver tracked by helicopters. You got it right here. That's it right there. Tonight, a suspect under arrest after a road rage shooting in Tampa that left a four-year-old injured. Slow speed through there. He's probably looking for a bailout. A police helicopter tracking 34-year-old James D. Jackson's vehicle shortly after police say he fled from the scene. According to authorities, on Tuesday evening, Jackson was driving when he became irate with the driver of another vehicle. Jackson allegedly pulling next to the vehicle and firing multiple shots. Inside, the driver, a woman in her 30s, an adult male passenger in his late 20s, and two children in the back seat. The four-year-old daughter of the driver struck by a bullet. She was then transported to the hospital. Jackson now facing a dozen charges, including attempted murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and discharge of a firearm from a vehicle. And tonight, Tampa police say the victim, that four-year-old girl who was wounded, is in stable condition. Shocking new video shows the lawlessness of Democrat cities colliding with Joe Biden's open borders insanity. Two NYPD police officers getting outnumbered and savagely beaten by a large group of illegal immigrants near Times Square. Those cops were just trying to break up a disorderly crowd outside a shelter, trying to arrest one of the illegals. And that's when the mob attacked. One of the thugs kicking an officer in the face while he's on the ground. He suffered a cut to his face and the other officer was injured. Five of those violent suspects were arrested by police later that same night, charged with assaulting a police officer, but four of them already back on the street, released without bail. And get this, they were only in custody for three hours. And we're getting new video of that fifth migrant in court today. One NYPD chief says all of those cop beating migrants should be locked up. Reprehensible. Cowards. You have eight people 
attacking a lieutenant and a cop. The four that were arrested should be sitting in Rikers right now, on bail, should be indicted this week and taken off our streets. You want to know why our cops are getting assaulted? There's no consequences. New video is sparking even more outrage over the group of migrants accused of attacking two New York City police officers. That's what you're looking at on the left hand of your screen. Those guys were freed without bail. And now look at this. Here's one suspect flipping the bird to the cameras. He could care less. Another blows kisses as he smiles and laughs. The other suspect next to him also putting up the middle fingers and cursing at those reporters. Remorseless, brazen, smug. And now the question is, will the Biden administration deport these migrants? Trace, this video is so hard to watch. On top of the video that was so hard to watch of them attacking police officers. Yep. Will there ever be accountability? No. And for your first question, will the Biden administration deport them? Doesn't matter. Because if they do, they'll be back in six days. How many cases do we have where these people just come back? It's a revolving door. They go and they come back. If you or I or the Atlanta Falcons, as you were talking about earlier, <laughs> went to Times Square and we kicked a cop in the head uh -huh. and we beat up a cop, we'd be in Rikers for the foreseeable future. That would be that. There's no bail for us. These people get out, get bail. It's ridiculous. The Bible tells us in the last days, that people would lack sympathetic understanding, that people would be unfeeling and pitiless toward their own family, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Without natural affection is the Greek word astorgos, which means without affection for family, parents or children, thus hard-hearted towards kindred. This is exactly what we are seeing in our world today. Turn tonight to a horrific crime outside Philadelphia. A son accused of attacking, beheading his own father, who was a longtime federal employee. We will not show the images here, but authorities are now pointing to the son's rage at the federal government. Tonight, Justin Moan is accused of the unthinkable, of murdering and beheading his father, a longtime federal worker, and posting it on YouTube. I am very sad for the family. Um, I'm very sad for the community, um, you know, and, and also for the people that knew him. According to police, the 32-year-old Moan from Levittown, Pennsylvania, killed his father in a fit of rage about politics, angry at President Biden and apparently at all federal workers. Police say his dad, Michael Moan, worked for the federal government. Neighbors shocked. It's weird. It's just, it's, you know, it's like, you know, we all watch over each other and uh, it's just, it's just sad. And in a scene from a horror movie, which we will not show here, Moan allegedly holding his father's head in a rambling 14-minute video left online for hours, describing him as a traitor to this country and calling for a revolution, saying if Joe Biden does not abdicate, then capture him and bring him to me in Pennsylvania. Moan was taken into custody 100 miles away, arrested with a gun inside a National Guard base. The FBI called in to assist as U.S. authorities continue to be concerned about an increasingly volatile environment where political threats have been on the rise. In fact, a top DOJ official recently told me the current surge in political threats is unprecedented, with judges, FBI agents, and presidential candidates among those recently targeted. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return, as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 
And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what? Appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.